Hi guys, in this video take a look at estimating areas using trapezium, the trapezium rule, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we estimate areas using trapezia? Sometimes may be required to estimate the area under a given graph. Say we have the graph of y is equal to f of x. And we have a given value of x, x1, and we'd like to find the area between the x points x equals 0 and x equals x1. We know that we can use the areas of rectangles to estimate the area under a curve. Let's say we have our curve y is equal to f of x, and we have corresponding x values between 0 and say 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. And we can use these values to give us rectangular areas. This gives us an approximation for the area under a curve. However, this can be very inaccurate. If we have our graph again y is equal to f of x, as we can see here we have quite a bit of area lost. This method can be improved through the use of trapeziums instead. These are trapezia because they have a set of parallel sides. So what is the trapezium rule? Recall the formula to find the area of a trapezium. Suppose we have the two parallel sides with lengths a and b and a width of h. Then the area we can calculate by doing a plus b and dividing by 2 and then multiplying by h. Again this h is the width of the trapezium. We can draw a set of trapezia under a curve with the same width. Here we have a curve and we can split up our endpoints x0 and x4 and draw trapezia of width h. These are all trapezia and they all have the same width h. This gives us other endpoints x1, x2 and x3. Each trapezium has an area somewhere between the areas of the upper and lower rectangles that can be used to estimate the area. So again we have our x values x0, x1, x2, x3 and x4. We can use a set of lower rectangles to estimate the area or we can use a set of upper rectangles to estimate the area. The two sets give a lower and upper bound respectively. We can find the width of each trapezium from the limit points of the area we wish to find and the number of intervals used. So here we have our x0, x1, x2, x3 and x4. These all have some width unknown currently, h. We have these endpoints x0 and x4 that we call our limit points. And then we have a certain number of intervals. This is the same as the number of trapezia and this is 4 in this case. And so to find the value of h, because each width is the constant h, we can do our x4, subtract the x0, this gives us a length from x0 to x4, and then we can divide by 4. In general, if we start from x0, we would have xn minus x0 over n. And this is the case n equals 4, corresponding to the number of intervals. The sides of the trapezia have lengths equal to the y coordinates of the endpoints. So we have our x0, x1, x2, x3 and x4. And we have this constant width of the trapezia, h. And then these endpoints for the trapezia give us our corresponding y coordinates. We take our x coordinates from the endpoints and substitute them in to our function for the curve, giving us corresponding y0, y1, y2, y3 and y4. The area of each trapezium can be given using the x and y coordinates. In general, we can find the area of a trapezium by adding the two lengths of the parallel sides and dividing by 2 and then multiplying by the width h. This gives us y0 plus y1 over 2 multiplied by h for the first area 
of the first trapezia. Again, this is because our y0 corresponds to the length of this first side, and y1 corresponds to the length of the second side. And the h is the constant width. And then we have for our next one, y1 plus y2 multiplied by h over 2. And then we keep going to our last one, which is going to be y3 plus y4 multiplied by h over 2. Notice that each y coordinate except y0 and y4 appears twice and have a common factor h over 2 when we sum up all the areas. We have that our area is going to be equal to the common factor h over 2 of all of the terms and then our y0 and our y4 only appear once so we have a y0 plus y4 and then we have plus two lots of the terms that appear twice. Notice that y1 appears twice, y2 will appear twice once in this term dot 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 which is the term y2 plus y3 multiplied by h over 2 and hence y3 will also appear twice. So here we're going to have y1 plus y2 plus y3 and in order to generalize this is our common factor. These are the two limit points and these are the terms in the middle that appear twice. We can recall that the area under a curve between two limit points can be written as a definite integral. Given the curve y is equal to f of x, if we have two x coordinates a and b, then the area under the curve between the two x coordinates a and b is given by the integral between a and b of f of x dx. As a result, we can summarize the trapezium rule for n equal intervals with endpoints x0, x1 up to xn within a set of limits a and b. So again, we have our y is equal to f of x, which is our curve, and we're going to be looking to approximate the area between two limits of x coordinates a and b. And therefore, the integral between a and b of f of x dx which is the area under the curve between the two points a and b is going to be approximately equal to using the chain rule we have our h divided by 2 h is our constant width and then multiply by the sum of the limit points y0 plus yn and then we have two lots of the middle terms so we have two lots of y1 plus dot 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 plus yn minus 1 and recall that each of the yi can be calculated by taking f of xi. And we can find our h by doing our b minus a divided by n for the n equal width trapezia. This is the summarization of the trapezium rule. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to use the trapezium rule to estimate the area under the curve given by the equation y is equal to e to the power of minus x squared between the limits x equals 0 and x equals 5 using 5 equal intervals. Our first step is to recall the formula for the trapezium rule involving an area. We have that the area is equal to h over 2 multiplied by y0 plus yn plus 2 lots of y1 plus all the way up to yn minus 1 and h is equal to b minus a over n where a and b are the limiting x points. Our second step is to use the formula to work out the width of each trapezium. We are asked to find the area between the limits x equals 0 and x equals 5. And so we have our limit values of a equals 0 and b equals 5. We have our number of intervals, which is n, and this is equal to 5 given in the question. And therefore our value of h is going to be the 5 for the b minus a 0 for the a divided by 5. So our value of h is 1. Our third step is to use the given equation to find the corresponding y coordinates for the required x coordinates. The required x coordinates can be found by using our first and last coordinates and using the fact that h is equal to 1. Our first x coordinate x0 is going to be equal to 0, the start point. Then we're going to have our x1 is going to be equal to 1 due to the fact that h is equal to 1 and correspondingly x2 will be equal to 2 
x3 will be equal to 3, x4 will be equal to 4, and x5 will be equal to 5. That's our upper limit point. Therefore, we can find our corresponding y coordinates by using the fact that in general y is equal to e to the power of minus x squared. We have that our y0 is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x0 squared. And this is going to be 1 because x0 is 0. Similarly, the y1 is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x1 squared. x1 is 1, so this is going to be equal to e to the power of minus 1. Correspondingly, y2 is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x2 squared. x2 is 2, so we're going to have e to the power of minus 4. y3 is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x3 squared, and x3 is 3, so we're going to have e to the power of minus 9. Similarly, y4 is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x4 squared, and x4 is 4, so we're going to have e to the power of minus 16. And lastly, we have our y5, which is going to be equal to e to the power of minus x5 squared, which is going to be equal to e to the power of minus 25, since x5 is 5. Our fourth step is to use the trapezium rule to work out the area under the curve. We have that the area is going to be equal to our h over 2, which is 1 over 2. We have our first and last y value, which is 1 plus e to the power of minus 25. And then we plus two lots of the middle values, which are e to the power of minus 1, e to the power of minus 4, e to the power of minus 9, and e to the power of minus 16. And when you work this out using a calculator, we're going to get 0 0.8863 to four decimal places. Our second example asks us to consider the definite integral, the integral between 0 and 1 of sine of x squared. We are asked to use the trapezium rule with four intervals to find an approximation for the integral. Our first step is to recall the formula for the trapezium rule involving a definite integral. We have that the integral between a and b of f of x dx can be approximated using the trapezium rule by h over 2 multiplied by y0 plus yn plus two lots of the middle y coordinates, y1 up to yn minus 1. And we have that yi is going to be equal to f of xi. And we have that we can find h by doing our b minus a over n. Our second step is to use the formula to work out the width of each trapezium. We have our limit values given in the question as 0 and 1. So a equals 0 and b equals 1. The number of intervals we're asked to use in the question, which is n, is equal to 4. Therefore we get the value of h is going to be equal to 1 minus 0 for b minus a divided by 4. And this is equal to 1 quarter. Our third step is to use the given equation to find the corresponding y coordinates for the required x coordinates. We have our first x coordinate x0 is equal to 0. And then we have our x1 based on our value of h, is going to be equal to 1 quarter. Our x2 is going to be equal to 1 half, by adding a quarter again. Our x3 will be 3 quarters, and our last value is going to be 1, because that's our upper endpoint. So x4 is equal to 1. Therefore, we can calculate our corresponding y coordinates using the fact that y is equal to the sine of x squared. We're going to have that y0, which is going to be equal to sine of x0 squared, which will be sine of 0 squared, which is going to be 0. Similarly, our y1 is going to be sine of 1 quarter squared, and this is equal to 0 0.0625. Then we have our y2, which is going to be equal to sine of 1 half squared, and this is equal to 0 0.2474. Then we have our y3, which is equal to sine of 3 quarters squared. And this is equal to 0 0.5333. And lastly, we have our y4. And this is equal to the sine of 1 squared. And this is equal to 0 0.8415. Just a clarification, for these calculations, we've been using radians. 
This is because we do all of our calculus in radians. Our fourth step is to find an approximation to the definite integral using the trapezium rule. We have an approximation for the integral between 0 and 1 of sine of x squared dx using the trapezium rule. It's going to be approximately equal to our 1 quarter over 2 for our h over 2 multiplied by 0 for our y0 plus 0.8415 for our y4 plus two lots of the middle terms which are 0.0625 plus 0.2474 plus finally 0.5333. And this is equal to 0.316 to three decimal places. And therefore, just to summarize, the integral between 0 and 1 of sine of x squared dx is approximately equal to 0.316 to 3dp. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.